one thing that unites all of us here is we hope to create change, whether in the construction of new technologies or the creation of new cultures of participatory medicine. I study how culture change occurs in vivo on hospital units. And what motivates me is what I think is one of medicine's deepest, darkest secrets. If you look at a chart of the top 10 leading causes of death in the United States, you won't be as surprised by a lot of things you see. Heart disease, cancer, pneumonia, stroke. On the right side, what I've done is I've added a column for preventable deaths from medical error. These range from 44,000 to 98,000 to 400,000 deaths a year. These are deaths that we're causing as a healthcare community. And these numbers are really, really hard to come by. But even at the lowest end of that spectrum, that's about equivalent to a 747 crashing every single day in the United States. We've known about this since 1999. But the reality is research has shown that we haven't really made a big dent in these numbers. And my question as a student has been, given what we know, that it's a major public health issue, and that healthcare historically has been at the forefront of innovation, why is it so hard for us to change healthcare? I'm coming at this through the tools from anthropology. So as an anthropologist, I study cultures in the same way that an anthropologist might study culture in a far-off tribe in a jungle. However, instead of studying that tribe in the jungle, I study doctors, nurses, patients, people who work in the hospital, basically everyone in this room, and I use the same tools. I try to understand how people understand their culture from their perspective. Through the eyes of an anthropologist, the hospital looks like a really weird place. People wear bright colored uniforms that seem to delineate both class and caste. There's elaborate rituals of scrubbing and rounding, and people wear magical amulets around their neck, and they walk around and place them in healing gestures onto patients. It's a pretty weird place. Let me show you a few things that I found from two years of fieldwork and also three years of training to become a native healer myself as a medical student. The first is that tribes exist. An anthropologist might define a tribe as a group of people who share common ideas, cultures, beliefs, or descent. It's no longer about the doctor-patient relationship. It's the doctor, patient, nurse, everyone else you see up there relationship. The hospital's a really big place. The second is that these tribes aren't equal. We talk a lot in healthcare about how everyone is on a level playing field, but the reality is that hierarchies exist. This is a diagram of an organizational chart that I've been making to sort of tease out exactly how hospitals function. And what I found is that a lot of the power structures span disciplines but are primarily contained within and are the results of historical quirks rather than any sort of conscious engineering. The third is that hospital tribes do not have the same values. A simple example of this would be the issue of timescales. Nurses tend to focus on the most acute issues facing a patient within an 8 to 12 hour shift, while physicians will tend to focus on patients um, on, over a longer course on diagnosis and treatment. Fourth, tribal members do not always understand each other. As a medical student, I was definitely guilty of this. I did not understand what nurses and nursing technicians and social workers did until I spent my entire day with them, learning how to do assessments and trying to see how they view the patient through their own eyes. Finally, our tribal priorities are actually contested. This is a study that was published in 2012 um, that actually found that it's a national study that actually found that the most satisfied patients actually had more hospitalizations and also were the most likely to die. We talk a lot about patient-centered care and patient satisfaction as being universal values, but the reality is that they're still contested. So why should you care? Let me tell you what's at stake with an example of what happens when you don't. This is the WHO surgical safety checklist. We have fantastic evidence of, of its ability to decrease mortality in operative settings. Um, and this has been sort of confirmed with research worldwide. What happens is when you send medical students to audit the surgeons, as they did in this study, you'll find that compliance rates of even just the check-in procedure ranges from 99% to 48%. Huge variation. On some of them, they drop as low as 9% of completion. So my message is this. We tend to view checklists, and I view checklists as the simplest form of technology, but we tend to view change in healthcare settings as technical. 
the reality is that all change in healthcare is actually social and cultural, requiring changes in relationships, beliefs, workflows, resources, and culture. And if we recognize that, we need to all become anthropologists. We have to understand the system, we have to understand the people who work and live within it. And if we can all be anthropologists, only then can we hope to ignite change. Thank you. Thank you.